want to do today is to focus on what are the really important and intermediate uh, steps on our journey. Because if you think about the vision of eHealth, uh, and I'm not going to get into the uh, ver various benefits or otherwise of general practice versus the specialists. What I am going to talk about is how we, as the Australian domestic community, go from a world which is now sort of e-enabled to a world which is genuinely realising the potential of all of that technology. And we all know, anyone who's got any grasp of Australian history will know, that our history is littered littered with investments from which we've not had the maximum benefit. Just look at all that train track that was laid across individual states which basically didn't connect with anything else. So you had to move uh, bits off the rolling stock from one rail gauge onto another. Now the people who made the initial investment in that particular piece of narrow gauge rail track running out of Sydney heading towards the Queensland border thought they were doing a U-boot thing. But what they didn't think about was the broad context. What they didn't think about was how actually all of that connected together to deliver a whole system of infrastructure. A system of transport which actually was cost effective, efficient and arguably improved in this particular case economic outcomes. What we want as health professionals, as health administrators, as people who are from various perspectives passionate about health, we want infrastructure that enables optimal, indeed great, patient care. We do want, as has been suggested to us by various other people, care which actually is driven by the patient. Now the truth of the matter is that those 15 year olds who do not even know what the term bank teller means, bless them, and when I tell my 18 year old son he needs to take a check someone sent him and he needs to deposit it in the bank, he goes, what? We want those 15 year old kids, those 10 year old kids, and Lord help us, but the three year old kids are already paying with their iPhone. We want them to be able to use those skills to be an active, active partner in healthcare. We want them, we want them to know what their glucose is. We want them to be informed about exactly how many times they deal that full knee extension if they've had something done to their knee. We want them to understand why it's actually in their interest and Lord knows the broader community interest for that to happen. E-health is about all those things. If, if, we look, if we look at where we are now, we are an ageing population. We're not on our own there, let's be honest. We also uh, are ageing in the sense that our old, old are increasing significantly as a proportion of our population. Now frankly, that's a good thing. It means most of us are going to get to a much older age than people in the earlier generation. What's not to like? There's a lot to like here. But as has already been said to you very clearly, we know that that means there's going to be lots more chronic disease. What we also know is that having a health system that actually delivers to people's actual needs and engages them properly requires a system which is fit for purpose in every sense. It requires a system which actually uh, delivers not only first class optimal clinical care, but it does it in a way that, can I say with my taxpayer hat on for a second, does it in a way that we can afford. We want to be able to share our national wealth in terms of health outcomes with all of our citizens. We do not want a world where Indigenous peoples have shameful life expectancy. We do not want pockets of people in our communities where you drive across several suburbs and you get out of the car in those suburbs and you look around at the BMI surrounding you and you know that this is a walking time bomb in terms of chronic disease and therefore shortened life expectancy. We don't want that. We don't want it. And that's actually why we're indulging in a number of important things. Health reform being one of the crucial ones. And it is the case, as I say, that my job is never done. 
because health is never static. It's not something that stays still. We constantly have to keep our health system and our electronic health system up to date. That's why we're doing major things in hospitals, in GP and primary health care, aged care, mental health, etc., etc., etc. But E is an absolutely crucial part of that. What we need to do is potentiate to enable uh, the kind of reform that will deliver those fantastic outcomes to all of our community. And our strategy, our e-health strategy, is absolutely part of that. So essentially, we're trying to improve safety and quality, we're trying to reduce waste and efficiency, we're trying to improve the continuity of care, and we're trying to basically ensure this patient-centred notion. Now, I was worried when Ricky described the notion of the personally controlled electronic health record, he started with the word brave. Uh, some of you may have seen Yes Prime Minister, which is currently touring the country. Some of you would know that that is a seriously negative term in bureaucraties. <laughs> Minister, that would be brave. Minister, that would be commendable, I think was the other word he used. So I'm now deeply concerned, but nonetheless, we're committed. We're in, we're doing it, and that's all there is to it. So frankly, tough luck if it's brave. But actually, it's great it's brave, because clearly what we want to do is to put on steroids, to accelerate uptake. One of the reasons we have driven so hard around the core elements of the electronic health program that we've been rolling out for, and I say this with a slight flinch, the 10 years I've been secretary of this department, is precisely because we want fast uptake here ultimately for all of our citizens and not just small parts of our community. And if we are going to avoid the rail gauge problem, if we're actually going to get those outcomes out into Yundamu, out into Mount Druitt, out into Mount Gravatt, we have to basically make sure that we have a capacity which is national and, dare I say, is omnipresent. The kind of vision that you've had outlined to you, which is ultimately everyone getting out their app on their iPhone and being completely connected, getting the teleprompt uh, when they have negative symptoms which they're getting relayed to them, that is a vision that frankly we'd all like to see. And the e-health strategy, uh, which was agreed, as you've already heard this morning, uh, was agreed by ministers, was about making that case both inside government, but more importantly, charting those crucial steps for us as we head towards what I describe as only at the beginning. Only the beginning. Now, I could, I've got a whole series of anecdotes I could give you, real ones, about people who will have real effects. I don't need to give you those. You know them. You understand them. So are we ready for the 1st of July? What do you reckon? If you don't say yes, I'm really worried. Good. <laughs> Good. Because basically, uh, I think we are ready to take the first steps. We don't know what the end of the journey is. And actually, we have been on the journey to date. But we do know about Australia that we have uh, 11 million internet subscribers. And you know as well as I do that for every uh, internet subscriber, there's a hell of a lot of users. We also know uh, that we have millions and millions of handset subscribers. We also know that people actually bought things over the internet last year. How many of you made an internet purchase trusting your credit card to the ether? Hands up. Yep, exactly. You kind of grit your teeth or you just don't even bother to do that anymore. You just put the number in and just watch the transaction record in case anyone got a hold of it, right? And occasionally have to cancel your card when it gets skimmed, right? Correct. Exactly. So the reality is we have a community who get it. They're ready for this and in fact they're kind of surprised that we haven't done it yet. They're kind of puzzled as to why it is sometimes a carrier pigeon has to take a piece of paper from one practitioner to another. So basically, we are no doubt, as a community, ready to go there. Also, I would argue to you that basically uh, we have a general practice community which basically is now electronically literate. We also know that GPs are supportive of this journey. They agree. Uh, 
the majority of them, that basically we, they will actually encourage their patient to use an electronic health record. That is fantastic. What I'd like the general practice community, though, to do is to uh, encourage the approximately 20-odd uh, percent of GPs who do not agree or strongly agree to basically go out and have that dialogue with your colleagues, because this is not just something run by health departments. The other thing we know is that medical technology is moving along in leaps and bounds. And if you think about the kind of potential we've had outlined to us today, the genuinely e-enabled potential, which is not just point-to-point -point communication, it is about how people practice. It is what they do. It is the engagement of the patient in that process. It is the whole notion of accurate diagnosis, patient engagement, the engagement of all of the practitioners in that person's care, and can we suggest better outcomes? Well, that'd be great. Now, we do know this is already happening in Australia. We do, do know that basically uh, we have in the Northern Territory something that is working. What's great about this, other than the demonstration effect, what's actually great is the social justice and equity side of this because this is remote Aboriginal people. These are people who actually do have poor life expectancy. These are people who basically need our uh, community's assistance more, I would argue, than many other people in our community. And so the fact that the Northern Territory has been able to roll this out, we now have 47,000 consumers of this capability, and the fact that over the last five years, when we started, uh, the view rate of the record was about 5,000 views a month. Now, 110 new clinical, 110,000, let's get that right, new clinical documents added to uh, this each month, and about 30,000 views a month are happening, and that number is growing. So what you can see is that this is becoming increasingly a part of how, uh, how healthcare is delivered. We know that basically we are on a journey. We know that we have to connect people. We know that we have to build technology, but not we, the government, uh, the software industry. We have to have people out in healthcare provider land actually connect. We have to talk about this. We have to think about what it means for clinical activity. We have to think about what it means for quality and safety, protocols, etc. We have to work together. We need to collaborate. And, of course, then we'll have to consolidate. It's great that we now have the foundations. The healthcare identifier legislation has been passed and the health identifier service has commenced. This is crucial. It's fundamental national infrastructure. Together we work on terminologies. It means that you will be a unique person. Not that you aren't already, but in terms of the record you will be. And as somebody has uh, said to me on many occasions when I've been travelling around the globe talking uh, about what we do, but also discharging my international roles, um, they've said Australia is actually uniquely placed, and this is true, notwithstanding the challenge of federation. We are uniquely placed because actually, ultimately, whilst we fight amongst ourselves sometimes, mostly we come together to collaborate and mostly we can work out what's a smart investment. And if you look at the NETA investment, which I know has been oft criticised in uh, various newspapers, let's be clear, the NETA investment, which was part of that journey underneath the camouflage netting, was about getting this basic national infrastructure without the rail gauge challenge. It was about putting in place these building blocks. Why? Not because I have grandiose plans to build one vast national system. Perish the thought. Not what bureaucracy is good at, not what I'm interested in, but what I am interested in is potentiating everyone out in industry to write product, to sell into the market, to enable, but to do it in a way that actually connects to do it in a way that means you will be able to talk to whomever you need to talk to, to enable the patient to play that role that I've outlined. And that is why we have been on this NETA journey. And as you know, uh, we are now getting the consumer participation in this. So consumer registration, which will basically start from the 1st of July, and you can see here all of the partners that are taking us to that 1st of July date. Um, 
I'm kind of excited about the 1st of July, and I'm a little careful when I talk about it because I don't want to oversell the 1st of July. The 1st of July is the start of this national world. The 1st of July, when you can actually go and register, and you will be able to then look, at, because it will be there, your Medicare data, your PBS data, um, things like immunisation and other things which will come on over time. But basically, all of these parties have been party to delivering uh, this potential, this capability. But more importantly, we've actually had more capability deployed on this project than I have seen on many things in health, and that is great, because actually what we're doing is building something which is so important for the future. You all know we've got the national e-health sites, and one of our challenges is not only to uh, make sure that they are really important showcases for this work so people across our country can understand this capability, but also that those sites can map into this national infrastructure. To do this, of course, we have given effect uh, to what is absolutely crucial to this. We've heard importantly about the role of patients. Well, it's not just patients, it's actually clinicians. It's actually people who run health services. It's actually people who care uh, and par part of what we deliver, which is actually already a pretty good health system. And so in developing our legislation, we have made sure that we have talked to people right across the countryside. And because of that, I actually think that we are as well placed as anybody in the world. Now, I will acknowledge, and it's important to do this, that we can look around the globe at beacons. Uh, individual services, small areas of countries who have delivered exemplary, outstanding e-health capability. But what we're trying to do is do uh, this for our country. And not just for the well-off, uh, the people in Mossman, not just for the people who have a, a capacity to be articulate, pushy, uh, inquiring, who do turn up with this much printout from however many Google searches they've done on an issue, we are talking about the person whose fourth language is English, who basically uh, will only go to a practitioner if they feel it's safe, culturally and in any other sense. So we have consulted about how this is structured, and it is absolutely uh, our intention to ensure that we stay engaged and that this remains responsive to the people who are at the centre of this system. We've had some pretty big milestones, as I've already indicated. Uh, we've basically uh, taken what I think are the absolutely crucial steps, and now, working with our change and adoption partner, we are looking to drive adoption. Now, you know as well as I do, the numbers are very easy to see and they're uh, understood. Adoption will be slow to start. And one of the things I want to be very clear about and be very clear about what is a reasonable expectation is that we will not have 22 million Australians registered for an electronic health record on the 1st of July. And actually, we don't want them. We want measured, sensible, focused uptake. We do want populations who are going to get the most value and benefit. Uh, we do want general practitioners, and the Minister, uh, I hope everyone appreciated the announcement she said, made this morning about the uh, MBS and people's ability to bill when they're actually adding those records. We do want clinicians to make a conscious choice about which of their patients they will start on who is going to get the most benefit. And then they can roll through over a period, and it may be a number of years, their practices, people who they will uh, use this technology for. But what we want to do uh, is we want to ensure that that take up is measured, but that it is real. That actually we can utilize these capabilities for the common good. And if I go essentially to, back to the beginning, I can't get this to work, here we go. If I go back to the beginning and go back to something that Ricky said, and, and that is that ultimately, those of us who are involved and engaged in healthcare, our actual vision is beyond the individual. Our actual vision is populations. Our actual vision is to be able to uh, predict, intervene, 
chronic disease at the population level. Our actual vision, ultimate vision, is to be able to map infectious disease early. Our actual vision is to be able to spot uh, the mutation in an influenza virus that has a shocking outcome much, much earlier than we currently can. Why? Because we will have the capability to actually intervene. We will have the capability to use everyone's expert knowledge to actually make a difference to global po population health and not just to individual health. So ultimately, that is our vision. But we will not get there, we will not get there unless we start person by person practitioner by practitioner, community by community, because that will be the jigsaw that we will build to deliver this whole picture. So I'm excited about the 1st of July. Uh, I know it's not the end, it's only just the beginning, but it's a journey that we are very much looking forward to travelling with you, and I particularly look forward um, to all the great ideas as yet unpredicted uh, and as yet unknown that will come forward that will enable us using this capacity to deliver better health outcomes, which is what this is about. Thank you.